So we are live behind the scenes of the Endless Adventures Instagram photo shoot. Alison's dressed beautifully, the lighting's fantastic. I think this is gonna be a good one, Al. <laughs> Welcome to Travel Beans. I am Emma and this is Alex. And there's a couple of other people. No, I'm Alex. Couple people. I'm Alex. And oh, this is Eric. And I'm Eric. <laughs> so we're here with the Endless Adventure. Uh, Eric and Alison, where are we going today? We're going on an adventure somewhere. We are. We're going into... <laughs> You're afraid to say I'm it. I'm scared to say it. Peron, I Peron. believe is what it's called. It's a lovely little seaside town. Right over there. And right yeah, we're conveniently there. here right now. We, we just arrived. Um, it's supposed to be an Italian style town, which is quite different from the rest of Slovenia. It actually, I think it borders quite close to Italy. So. Also, there is no cars allowed. So we've mm. had to park outside of town and we have to get a free bus or a little walk. Yes. So, so, so you want to get there. First impressions is that it's a very sleepy little town. There doesn't seem to be that many people here. Considering the car park was full when we arrived, we had to go to a further away car park, so I was worried it was going to be really, really busy. But it's not that bad. Also, only permit holders from the area are allowed to drive into the city centre, and there's still not that many cars around. So it's really nice, it's really peaceful. There are a lot of seafood restaurants around, so I imagine we'll probably be going to one of those later. Also behind me, we've got the docks here with all the boats. As you can see, all the buildings along behind the dock are really colourful and pretty, so I'm quite excited to go and wander into the centre. So far we've been to a few places here in Slovenia, and everywhere is very, very different. Yes, it is. Actually, yeah, Maribor was very different from here. It had a completely different feel, the architecture was different. And I think Italy is very, very close to here, so you can actually see the Italian influence mm. quite clearly. Can you see it, guys? <laughs> No idea what's going on there. A bunch of people wearing the same blue aprons walking down the street and playing musical instruments. Who knows? The accordion, I, no idea, I think. But I like it. It blows my mind how many of these places there are in Europe that I've just never ever heard about. Yeah. Like, we've travelled Europe quite extensively, but every single time there's always somewhere new to visit. And it's so cheap as well. For any of our viewers in the UK, going somewhere like Maribor in Slovenia, you, of course you have Ljubljana, which is a lot more well known, but Maribor is a cute little village and, well, no, it's the second big, biggest city actually. But it only has 90,000 people. With only 90,000 people and it's really affordable. So if you want a weekend away and you don't want to spend much money once you're there, these kind of destinations are really, really great. Poland was another one. Super cheap, really great. It's like something out of a horror movie. What? Especially this camel toe out know, of a horror movie. That looks very uncomfortable, guys. Poor guy. It does not look practical. It says do not touch, so I'm not going to get too close to it, but yeah. For any non-Europeans watching, just this is the reason that you should come to Europe, is these streets. They always have cobbled streets and then very, very thin ones like this. I see this in most countries in Europe and I absolutely love it. I always feel like I'm in Europe when I see a street like this. And especially if you can find like a little cafe or a restaurant down one of these streets, usually it's gonna be pretty good, especially if it's full of those pesky locals. So we are live behind the scenes of the Endless Adventures Instagram photo shoot. We are shocking at our Instagram, but these guys, they are on point with it. They know exactly where to find a good shot. And as you can see, they found a lovely bit of foliage to sit in front of. Alison's dressed beautifully. The lighting's fantastic. I think this is going to be a good one, Al. <laughs> Here is Alison. As she fluffs her feathers and looks gazingly into the sun. <laughs> That's not so ladylike. <laughs> she aggressively shows her finger. As a sign of aggression. Of aggression. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the start of a TV show, a travel show. So, we have arrived at the place we're going to be having lunch. Um, Eric and Alison chose the place because they found some reviews online. Um, 
this is the name, it's kind of confusing, there's two places right next door to each other, one gives you the drinks and then you have to order your food at the hole in the wall over at this place and then they bring it all out to you on the seats around it. So you have the separate drinks menu and the separate foods menu. So this wine here cost us a nice six euros guys, 150 each. Absolute bargain. And it tastes delicious. All of the food here has a seafood vibe going on. There's really not much else other than seafood. Because we're by the coast. Because we're right by the ocean. Um, so some of you may know that I am vegetarian. However, in recent months, I have been swayed slightly to the pescatarian scale. She's on the dark side. I've swayed myself to the dark side. I've been craving it, and you know what? I thought if my body's craving it, I'm gonna have it. Well, this is if a big like reveal. It, deal with it, guys. <laughs> well, this is a big reveal. I you eat fish. My, I can make my own rules in life, I find. Well, I think it's strange that you're even justifying it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll eat what I want. I think those guys are going to go for a massive seafood platter, but we're going to be a bit more modest. So we're going to get ourselves just some calamari and a fish fillet. For the last about five years, Emma's been vegetarian, and every time we go to a restaurant, I have to get something. Maybe we have to go to a separate restaurant, but now she's eating fish. It's glorious. It changes we can it. share things, guys. Finally. But even then, I have to be in the mood. I can't just have it every day. Like, I, yeah, I have to build myself up to it. And I feel like, especially when I'm in a place where I feel like I'm going to miss out if I don't try it. Like, right now, we're in a seafood specialized area. We're in, we're with right a couple of foodies. We're with the foodies. Foodies? Ooh. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we're like fatties. So, hey, fatties. <laughs> Keeper. <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, when in Rome and all that, so I'm going to try the seafood here. Okay, we have our food. Everything smells so, so good. I am instantly starving right now. <laughs> Firstly, we have fish with what I'm guessing is like maybe garlic and herb butter um, and some fried polenta. And then we also have this mound of calamari with fries and tartar sauce. I could not be more excited right now. I'm just going to go straight in and try a piece of calamari. I can't remember the last time I had calamari. Okay. Is this weird for you guys watching at home to watch Emma eat some fish? It's pretty surreal mm. for me. That's really good. There's nothing worse than bad calamari because it's always super chewy. But this is cooked amazingly. The batter is really light. It's not like super bready or anything. And you've got the lemon and the tartar sauce. It's good. Welcome back to the, mm -hmm. to the dark side. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god, it's great. Oh, okay, it's quite dark fish. Maybe it's mackerel or something. Yeah, there's two little things. There's two little guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's quite a strong taste, but it's really, really good. I think it must be mackerel. Okay, so update. After a few more bites of the fried fish, I can confirm it is a little too pungent for me. I used to really love fish, it was one of my favourite things to eat, but I think as I haven't had it for such a long time, my tolerance of the strength of the flavour is not as good as it used to be. So I think I'm just going to stick to the calamari and the salad, and Al's going to have to finish up on the fried fish. Consider me deep fried, guys, because <laughs> that was enough calamari for a lifetime. <laughs> so we now we are finished eating. This place is pretty small. There's not much left to see. Maybe if you came in the summertime, you could keep yourself entertained a lot longer. But especially right now, with the beaches and stuff. But right now, it's very, very quiet. And yeah, most things are closed. We have been walking around. It feels like every inch of this place is very, very, very <laughs> it's small. It's tiny. It's very cute, though. I highly recommend if you like going to places with these little cobbled streets and walkways, it is really nice for that. And it's really quiet. It's not crowded at all. I would say it's quintessentially European. Yes, yeah, very nice. I just wanted to say quintessential. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go back to the car and head back to Ljubljana. And this is the time where, guys, I put you into my mouth. Ow! And we're back in Ljubljana. <laughs> so, we have left Eric and Alison to their own devices back at the house because we have a date tonight. So, one of our subscribers saw one of our stories that we were in Slovenia and they want to come and meet us. Yes, so if any of you want to meet us in future, follow our Instagram stories because then you can see where we are up to date time It's the wise. best place to catch us. <laughs> So we're going to go meet them in the town centre and also it will be really nice to have a look at the town when it's not super crowded because of the switching on of the Christmas lights. Come on guys!
Well, that was nice. <laughs> we had a few mulled wines, and now it's time to call it a night and head back to our flat. Because tomorrow we've got a very exciting day. We are going to Lake Bled and a secret lake that we've just heard about. <laughs> also, it was very nice to see the city not so crowded from turning on the Christmas lights. It was a lot more sparse going out. It was a lovely, pleasant, Christmassy experience. It's a very, very beautiful city here. Very it's underrated. Very underrated. On the European scale. Head over to Ljubljana, guys, if I said that in any way correctly. So thank you so much for watching guys. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the subscribe button. It's the big red one. You know where it is. Hit it. If you haven't, I'm very disappointed in you. Leave us a comment where is one of your favourite places in Europe. And I think it's time for you to say goodbye. So thank you for watching guys. We'll see you on the other side. Beans out!